Welcome to my business and property business lockdown rescue series where I'm interviewing uh, different clients of mine and different experts within the field of what's happening during lockdown. But if you'd like my take on what's happening during lockdown, what you can do, what's going to be happening after lockdown, all you need to do is listen to the rest of this webinar. Hi, a uh, very good evening to everyone on the uh, first episode of week two, or the sixth episode. Um, first webinar was me doing a, a question and answer. Second uh, was doing a example deal, one of my mentees had done. Uh, third was talking to my architect, and for me, this has become all how different people are dealing in the current times um, with the lockdown situation. Um, then moving on, we spoke to Nikki Pope on Thursday. She was great. Um, she has been an investor for many, many years. Um, Friday saw my conversation with Ajit, the mortgage broker. Um, this week, I uh, would like some feedback if you'd like the mortgage broker back every Friday to see how things are developing. Because speaking to him, everything's moving quite quickly with who is doing mortgages and who isn't. So maybe once a week, once a fortnight, I'd appreciate some feedback in the chat box to let me know what you think. Um, uh, tomorrow, I'm speaking with uh, Sean. Uh, Sean Brett is one of my millionaire clients, um, currently just put in a planning application to build six flats. Um, I took him on a journey from a borrowed 12 grand, well, he had to borrow 12 grand, he made 40 grand off from and then started with my mentorship and took us five years and two months to get him to millionaire. Um, so he's going to be chatting with us tomorrow. Uh, he's got 20 properties that he owns, uh, he's got some rent to rents that he owns, he runs HMOs, uh, and he's got a development project on where he's building a block of, uh, or converted a church into six flats actually. Um, this evening I was supposed to be speaking to Maxine, uh, an estate agent of 27 years. Unfortunately, in the last um, hour, She's um, had to go and deal with her son who is poorly. Um, so um, I'm going to do a repeat of last Monday where I'm going to ask questions. You can ask away, I'm going to answer questions. You can ask away on what you think uh, you need or how I can help you to carry on trading as normally as possible in the current market. So I'm going to talk for five or ten minutes about where I see the market, where I see it's going. Um, and I've been doing property since 2004. Um, I've had property um, going back into the, the uh, recession before the last one. I traded through the last recession. Um, so we've, we've seen a couple of dips before. So, um, what do I think is going on? What do I think is going to happen at the moment? Um, I actually believe, um, Andy, can you just go and tell me? I think I might take a bit more notice of you. Okay. Right, I'm very sorry about this. Right, so where are we in the current market? What do I think uh, is what we should be doing? Well, speaking to the architect, development projects seem to be going all right. Looking at last Tuesday's um, uh, deal analysis and looking at uh, a typical deal that's a delayed completion, um, that's cool, but that one would complete to go on the market in three or four months. Um, my my concern at the moment is not with 12 months time at all my concern is that once we're out of this there could be potentially be 
a three to six month dip. Now, three to six month dip, I think it'll bounce back. We had the Brexit bounce. London's gone up quite a lot over the last uh, month or so since Brexit completed. Um, now to be bounced into this. Uh, I think a lot of people have been made redundant and a lot of people have been put on temporary, you know, 80% work and kind of half suspended but being paid for by the government. So when is business going to turn back to normal? When are people going to start, you know, doing stuff? I think that we're in for um, an interesting three to six months when we come out of here, um, which will give us a huge opportunity to take advantage of, you know, the quieter market and being able to get some deals so you know i think we'll get deals come out of this um and you know um, if you're doing projects that uh, aren't going to come out of the back of it about back of 12 months or more i don't think you've got any problems with it having bounced back by then I just think you're going to have this temporary, temporary period. Um, obviously, I think I mentioned last week, if it is all about supply and demand and, you know, affordability. So if people are working, you know, how soon after this are they going to want to move? I think there's going to be people wanting to move into rented. Um, so I think rental demand will go up again. Um, the, the percentage of people that, that die from coronavirus, I think as a percentage of the population, is going to, you know, if, if we had a, a bubonic plague thing that wiped out a huge percentage of London population back when it happened, um, then that's obviously going to restrict the supply and demand because housing is not going to be in such demand and therefore supply and demand curve changes but yeah you know, I think we're definitely going to have uh, a temporary three to six month dip where you're going to have a field day uh, picking up a few little deals um, you know making 20 30 grand on the flip when it comes out the other end um, and yeah as I said last week we've got uh, a property deal on at the moment where we've just had an offer accepted on a um, plot of land to build nine flats and it's going to take us nine months to build it normally but probably a bit longer because of the coronavirus and the fact that uh, as Mark said on Wednesday you can't have 100% of the building workforce all on the site at the same time um, so if it takes slightly longer it affects the funding costs slightly but there's so much margin in it because of the discount we've got for buying it um, uh, that you know it's going to bounce out very very nicely percentage wise um, yeah, we're going to be like, there's going to be a double your money offer um, as I sent out on an email to everybody the other day um, right I'm going to um, let's have a look and see what people have put in the questions uh, has anybody got any questions for me about um, what's going on uh, and what's um, yeah we're getting yeah somebody said it's running about 10% death rate from, from people affected um, it, we just don't know what's going to happen. Um, uh, I think next two, three, four weeks, we're going to have a bit more of an idea. I think people are just about getting used to the idea of the, the lockdown and minimum, and they're starting to see numbers increasing. So they're starting to behave themselves, apart from our lady in Scotland, uh, about staying at home when they should be staying at home. Um, let's see what we get. Um, Neil says... Do you expect regional bounce back differences? Uh, historically, London is always the last recession. London recovered within 12 months and some areas up north never recovered. Um, I think up north is very, very much controlled by the wages in any one particular area um, because that creates an affordability. And when there's an affordability thing, when the government 
uh, introduced the affordability and no self certs anymore. That restricted um, to a certain degree also the buy to lets and you know the rentals in a certain area that restricted it um, to a certain degree. And, and it actually, there was loads of towns where you could buy properties for 10 or 15 or 20 grand, but it put them up to 30, 40 grand minimum price because of what you can get on a rental. So the rental demand on the buy to let market um, created that. Um, there we go. Um, I want some feedback as to what other types of speakers you would like on here. Um, that would be really cool. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get my solicitor to speak on here. He's, he's just coming back to me with a date. I've got my accountant who's going to come and have a conversation with everybody you know, about certainly employment and subsidies and business subsidies and buy to let landlord what to do. Um, a jeep, we asked a question about uh, last week whether or not if we asked for payment holidays whether or not that would affect our credit history um, and he told us to make sure if we get a payment holiday we get that in writing um, um, and Justin yeah I'm, I'll give you a call after the webinar um, so that we can have a chat about that uh, Mary says she has an empty property in North East just before lockdown, letting agent not answering. Uh, I am pretty sure that there are letting agencies up there that are working. If you have got a key that you can post to them, um, there are people doing viewings at the moment. Um, whether or not anyone wants to move because they're not supposed to move is a whole different thing. So would somebody move in? Don't know. Um, but, you know, a lot of agents are doing virtual viewings. Um, it's, uh, again, oh, we can chat with Sean uh, tomorrow. He's got quite a lot of tenants. Um, there's an interesting question. Do we have any mortgage valuers in the group? Um, I do actually have one um, Rick's valuer uh, on my mentoring, so that would be interesting if I can get hold of him and see what his, what his uh, take is on the whole thing. Um, Jan said that these webinars recorded, if so, where can we find them please? Uh, if you drop an email to mark at glenarmstrong.com uh, that's Mark, M-A-R-K, and uh, Glenn Armstrong, Glenn with two N's. We'll be able to sort that. Um, right, Neil, what affects valuations? Um, one, it's slightly affected by the mortgage companies because at different times they'll instruct uh, positively led or negatively led um, valuations. The valuers have got for their indemnity insurance, they've got a 10% cent margin of error. So if a property uh, on an average day they'd value it at 100 grand, they could probably stretch to 110 if you were pushing them and you know it was a real sale that was happening at 110. Um, also they perfectly within their rights to down value it to 90. So what are they likely to do at the moment? I would say uh, at the moment they would probably down value it to 90, uh, maybe eight, uh, 95, because, or maybe they'll just value it at 100. Um, I think, as with always, there are going to be some who are more bolder than others. Some people, especially the newer qualified ones, because of their indemnity insurance, are very careful and cautious when it comes to the valuations. Um, it's very often about comparisons. So if there are comparisons of sales in the area because they can then justify their valuations, then you, know, you can perhaps, if you meet them, and that's, it's really, really important, I believe, that you should always meet the valuation. Um, 
you know, even if you're meeting the estate agent as well. Um, I've done many valuations by going to the estate agents and picking up the keys, saying that there was going to be a valuation to be done and picking up the keys myself and meeting the value out of the property, um, especially in your Mortgage Express same day refinance days. Um, who, who we just don't know. Um, one of the surveyors always the value at maximum value. Uh, and another one of the surveyors we used to deal with, even in the 2005-2006 peak growth areas, were always very uh, lie on the cautious side. So um, one thing I would say is if you uh, do stuff through Connells, that it's their valuers who always do the valuations for mortgages when you go through them. So going through Connells, if you're buying a property from Connells, the chances are you're not going to get a down valuation at all. So, um, yeah, it's, I, I, I would say, I think it's not so much the valuations um, that it's going to be the, the, the advantage we're going to get uh, as we come out of lockdown is that there's not going to be many people out buying properties straight after lockdown. And if I think if you're out the door, uh, out the hatches, when the, the, the race trap opens straight after lockdown, and you've been keeping an eye on stuff on right move, I've noticed properties coming on the market today on right move, but they're new builds, you know, new development stuff, so they're empty properties. Um, there's going to be probate stuff out there, and there are virtual viewings going on. Throw some cheeky offers in. You never know. Throw in 10 cheeky offers, you might get one decent deal. Um, and that's, that's, that's what we're here for. But don't forget, creative, cre creativity and doing some of the sophisticated engineering uh, techniques that we teach, that we've gone through, the delayed completions, all that type of stuff. Um, really open it up to one, not needing to worry so much about a valuer. Of course, we need to end up worrying about the end value. Um, but uh, in reality, I, I believe three to six months we'll have a little dip, and then it'll all be back. We've already had a bounce back out of Brexit, with property prices going up in London quite a bit since Brexit. And um, we've seen in the last year, some of the smaller, some of the northern towns have started to get some appreciation. Leeds, I think, Leeds City Centre was the first town to bounce out of the recession outside of London, um, followed by a few other city centres. Um, and there are places that are still stuck um, and haven't gone anywhere. Um, if we had self certain mortgages come back, <coughs> I reckon, again, you start seeing more repossessions in the future. However, that would push the prices up again, uh, especially in the nicer house brackets for the self-employed. Um, so hopefully, Neil, that's quite comprehensively answered your question. Can we talk about what affects valuations? Um, so there you go. Justin just said one of his mortgages with the interest rate change has dropped from £387 per month. Um, oh, sorry, goodness, mortgage payment for a 387k mortgage dropped by £254 per month. So um, there we go. We are going to see quite a lot of um, drops prices, uh, sorry, of mortgage drops. So the profitability uh, is going to open a bit, apart from the fact that some tenants aren't going to be repaying. So you're going to be pot like as to whether you've got, um, if you've just got one or two properties, whether your properties are going to carry on staying or whether you need to get a mortgage holiday for them. Um, again, will that affect your credit? Mortgage broker says, make sure if you get a mortgage agreement, uh, a payment holiday agreement with a lender that you get in writing. So if you do get any bad marks on your credit, you can go back and waive the letter giving you permission 
um, at a later date and quoting um, the, the uh, coronavirus issue. Uh, Damien McLaughlin said, is this a good time for lease options? If so, we'll do a session on that. Um, Damien, it may well be that if somebody can't sell a property, that they'll be more than happy to um, I'll give you an option to buy it and lease it off of them in the meanwhile. We, I like one of my strategies is actually to rent a property off someone for 12 month period um, with also exchanging on it, having permission to do it up in the meanwhile. Because that's like, um, like rent, renting to, to do up to sell. Um, and that can work very well. I'd take in one of them on now, I think, and understanding that you know you're going to land it in three or four months time spend a couple of months to refurb i think you might see um the beginning of the dip around that period of time just as it's coming back on the market whereas if it's a bigger project it, you might see that you're coming out as it because out of the dip because it takes longer um, i wouldn't really want a chance holding one for a longer period of time and unless you could just say look we want to do it for 18 months if you did an 18 month delay completion um, then and rent it for 18 months off them I think that might be a, 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 a good idea uh, in fact that might be something we're dusting and just turn around uh, and not start the work for a few weeks so um, right, I'm going to ask if anybody's got any hands that are going up so that I can ask, except for Shadra who has his hand up every time because I'm pretty sure he thinks that um, his hand is down really. Okay, he's got it today. Uh, I had lots of people have typed questions, but... And nobody who's got their hand up to ask a question. Now oh, here we go, Stuart. Stuart Crosby. Hi Stuart, how can I help you? Hello again. Um, I don't know whether to keep, is the webinar on tomorrow as usual? Yeah, the, the mentoring webinar, so for actual deals um, and deal clinic stuff. Um, we're yeah. sticking that to the webinar. The, this series of webinars is all about trading through the coronavirus period and what would you do, what wouldn't you do. Um, not just my opinion, but you know, other millionaire clients of mine's opinions um, and you know, experts in their field like mortgage brokers and etc, etc, etc. So um, I am also going to try and get an economist on here, um, although with the best of times he's pretty pessimistic. Um, but he does know one of the banking panel personally, so he's always kept me fairly uh, up to date with you know what's going to happen rather than what after it has happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah, no worries. That's, uh, that's fine. I'll just uh, speak to you tomorrow. Sure. All right. No problem at all. We'll go through. I think we'll probably have quite a lot of deals to go through tomorrow, um, judging by the messages we've got. Um, I had a great fun last week. I had a day out trying to get a boiler sorted out, having no hot water in the house, uh, no oh, heater yeah. in the house. Then I also had a day out trying to get baby food. And that was horrendous because it took uh, like ages to track it down. And eventually, yes, we got yeah. some mail order, but that, that was a, a full day wasted. So my week last week, we're trying to do the, the evening webinars as well. And I'm trying to put a lot of stuff online so that um, one, people who've been on my training can actually then have access to the online niche, you know, specific strategy stuff. Yeah. Um, and you know that's that's taking quite a lot of hours as well so um, probably working harder than normal if that's possible <laughs> uh, alright I'll speak to you tomorrow Stuart alright Dad thanks so, um, Shadra's got his hand back up and his hand up every time I fix it's down and um, dum 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 Right, I'm just 
just going to reply to someone who wanted a number to contact. Um, <laughs> Justin, <laughs> um, I thought over the comedian. I think he's talking about when I was talking about the two kids, both with baby milk. He said I should have bought a bigger telly. <laughs> Maybe just surround soundy. Um, right, Ben says, could I please have the square footage of an HMO bedroom in a micro flat? Ben, go. Let's put you on live. I know you're not shy to speak. I'm going to pop your hand up so I can find you easier. Where are you, Ben? Oh, there you go. All right, there you Hi, go. Hi, Ben. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. So, um, HMO, every local government area has got their own regulation figures, yeah? Right, So there yeah. are minimum size required requirements for rooms. So you've got, like, box rooms. Sometimes we've had to make a... Um, a free bed house with two receptions downstairs. Sometimes we've had to move the wall very annoyingly of a box room by about eight mm -hmm. or nine inches or a foot, making yeah. the, one of the larger bedrooms slightly smaller, but just giving you the minimum size requirements for it, yeah? Yeah. Um, they're normally the first room to rent out. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, as far as the actual size requirements, um, there is a government guideline, but the councils are at liberty to change that if they want, from what I can remember. Okay, yeah. So they are slightly different, okay? Just like yeah. when you're applying for planning on properties, um, there's the government guidelines on minimum size requirements. So like a two yeah. bed has to be over a certain square footage. A three bed has to be over a certain square footage. Um, yeah. Okay. Is there is there a rough is there a rough sort of guide that you wouldn't go any smaller than for HMA bedroom? Uh, <clears throat> if you're talking about buying a big warehouse and turning it into fifty rooms, then yeah. I'd make sure they've all got en suites because of the premium you can get from it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. If you're talking about just a property that you're turning into five or six bedrooms. Yeah. Um, it, it, you can have a look and see the comparisons, but the the room, the smaller rooms aren't on a lot less than the bigger rooms. No. Yeah, you okay. might get 60, 70, 75 quid for a box room when it's 80 quid for a, um, a, a for a ordinary bedroom. So, all, yeah. all different. Um, okay. Um, it, again, you can do your comparisons. Uh, or if you're thinking of doing one, I'd much rather pay 30, 40 quid for what I call gold mining ads and put a property <laughs> yeah. on there that doesn't exist and see yeah. what feedback you get. And if you get no feedback, one, I'd check yeah. the adverts running properly. But if the advert's running properly, you're yeah. probably charging too much. Okay. Okay, and then, you know, if you put an advert on really cheap, you'll find you'll get absolutely swamped. Right, okay. It's going back to the supply demand. So it it's not always about the size of the room and stuff. As long as you've got your minimal requirement, people aren't too fast. Um, there's going to be a price difference, but not a lot, okay? Yeah, okay, right, cool. Let's Thank go you. to Joe. Um, thanks, Ben. Um, a recently declared millionaire client. Hi, Joe. Hello, Joe. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. I love that um, post on Facebook you put the other day of that dinosaur thing walking down the road. Oh, bloody brave, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I love us. <laughs> Yeah, on the same way, I'm going to try and learn some crazy shit, I love it. Mate. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, yeah, as I've tried, I've been buying up quite a few little one and two beds down in Hastings here, mm -hmm. and I've been slapped in the face by this bloody COVID. Um, right, um, basically, yeah, number one, I've got um, 
a place that um, how can I put it? They can't get a value of it, mm-hmm. and it's got a long lease. Mm-hmm. And they said they depend on it if it's got a long lease with, by, with a drive by, mm-hmm. uh, which is good. Uh, I've approached. Uh, I bought it in a modern auction, okay. and, um, and um, they, the, the vendor does not want to go down this route. Um, so I'm kind of up the up the swan on yeah, this Yeah. So have you actually then, have you actually bought it? No, I, I haven't bought. I haven't even exchanged. But okay. I've given the um, modern auction house seven k for the uh, for the deal. Yeah, it's a bit bit annoying because um, what we normally do is we get the vendor to extend the lease, get it all prepared, and on the completion day, we buy it for the slightly higher price and they use the extra cash to extend the lease. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think, yeah. But if they don't, if they don't, if they don't want to play ball, you could um, offer slightly more for it. Oh, uh, well, I said I'd give them a £1,000 as an incentive for me yeah. but thank you. And they're still not uh, doing it. I'm waiting for them to come back on this £1,000 thing. All right, OK. Look, I've yeah. got another one of my clients, um, Phil, who I've, I've worked with quite closely over some years on some development projects. Uh, he became quite an expert on lease extensions. And... Uh, we were trying to track down a solicitor who specialised in them and he was really, really good. Um, okay. Essentially, if you drop me an email, I'll put you in and ask about lease extensions. And he's based in Hastings as well. So um, I can put you in touch with Phil. And he, oh, is that Turtle? Yes, that's exactly Turtle. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yes. Yeah, he's, he's good. I, I don't know, it's my clients, they all seem to be really cool, or 99% of them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, no, like, you, with you, Joe, you're just always happy. Um, oh, God, it's, okay. it's, yeah, it's that, yeah, you're just yeah. walking around, and I'm multi-millionaire, yeah, I feel good. <laughs> um, yeah, every day's a Friday. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I'll put you in touch with Phil and see if yeah, and see if, yeah, if we can uh, track down that specialist lawyer. He may well be able to help you with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause, yeah. So I've been stacking up all these one for short leases. Um, just to quick one. Another one I want to run past you. There's one for short leases. I've had it for three months now, mm-hmm. and they said that uh, um, they'd give us an extension on it, and. And they've got, they've got a local um, survey around and um, it's coming at 22 and a half to 25 and a half. I look at lease, of, lease advice.org website and it comes in at 13 to 14 K. And they're being a little bit cheeky. Yeah, I um, think, think they might be. Well, they want to the negotiate and I've got to wait my two years. <laughs> Unless you've got any sort of skills around this one. Who appointed the surveyor? You or them? They did. Yeah, well, there you go. There's your answer. Um, yeah. There is a government website with minimum or maximum oh, amounts oh, so they can do it, yeah? I'm going to say that again. There's a government website with minimum and maximum allowable extension figures. Yeah. But the thing is, as I have, yeah, I've, I've checked it and it's way over, yeah. Yeah, or you can get a third. You know, like normally um, when leases are, when the owners of a property come along and try and extend and put the lease up, you know, when you own a commercial unit and you come to the end of the five year or 10 year period before the lease uh, review, um, quite often you get surveyors do a review on your behalf as well to argue the toss with them. Yeah. Uh, so you said, would you recommend getting the same surveyor to do it for me? Um, because because the, I wouldn't. I'm thinking if we will not release the report finally enough. <laughs> um, yeah. I'd, I'd get a report by a, a, a different one. 
Yeah, but as I haven't owned it for two years, I can't really contest it. And to the best of my knowledge, well, to the best of my knowledge, I cannot contest yeah, it. Yeah, Phil had a Phil like, had a loophole around it, but I think it involved Ooh. just signing something, the vendor signing something. At the, um, it wasn't that complex. But I, I, I own this one, so you say the word vendor, but do you mean the free? The, yeah, the, fr- the yeah no, no the previous the previous owner. Because the previous owner, if they've owned it for more oh, two years, could it extend? Can't, I can't do anything. Yeah, but we found a Phil found a loophole around that, providing they sign something prior to completion. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I'm, okay, I'm just to say, no, this is, this is a second property I'm talking about. Yeah, so, I, um, I understand. So I've only I've actually completed this one from three months ago, Ben. Yeah, but if the vendor had to sign the big, <coughs> um, a specific piece of paper prior to completion, um, then you might be able to use that piece of paper to extend it yourself. Oh, so maybe I could track down. So are you indicating that I should? I'm not saying a word. Track down. I'm just depending. Some <laughs> people, some people do more than so, seventy uh, in a seventy. Some people do more than a hundred in a seventy. Some people stay under a hundred. Yeah, yeah. Talk okay. to talk to Phil, all right? Yeah, that kind of makes sense. We yeah. had we had a couple okay. of these um, a few years ago, and we spent a lot of time finding our, our way through and round it. And Phil did it, and he's the one. Whenever anyone asks a question, I get him to to ask. Oh, blimey! Okay, cool. Okay, yeah. I'll definitely drop you that email again. And, um, and if you could hook us up again, that'd be splendid. Yeah. Sure. So, um, apart from your couple of lease extension challenges, how are you finding the current market? You've been trading properties for many years now. Um, you yeah. had got quite a portfolio on one side. You uh, decided all of a sudden that you better do something because of the taking away of interest rate relief. Yeah, and also Brexit. Uh, well, I was scared of Brexit for, for a long while, so I thought I'd do nothing. And <laughs> Go on a holiday for but, a few years uh, like you do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know what, I'm finding what I've got, um, my Airbnbs, I just, all my bookings fell off a shelf straight away, mm-hmm. and, uh, and I filled them with Londoners wanted to come down to the coast for a long term. Right, okay. Um, got a sweet spot at the end of it, so, and they were paying pretty good whack. Yeah. Um, I've decided to be not give a couple of them to NHS workers for free. Yeah, just um, get back. Uh-huh. And um, and all but one of my rentals uh, are paying the money. Um, okay. Uh, they're paying the rent. And what? A lot of the time, I guess they have been on the bloody DSF. But, um, <laughs> what What did you? Uh, what are you doing about viewings on vacant properties? How are you dealing with that? Oh, don't. I've got one in London, man, and uh, I'm suddenly moving out. They've moved out, and the letting agents wouldn't let... I have suddenly lined up, and they wouldn't let them sign the bloody ASC and move in. It's just it, they're empty. It's not, it's not 1,600 quid a month, you know? Oh, um, and you didn't know they are? Yeah. I've got, no, I haven't got any names. I cannot contact them. Yeah, don't, no. don't forget, technically, no, no. technically, no one's allowed to move at the moment, and, you know, at the end of the day containing this thing and going along with the law I think it's quite an important thing so maybe that's a, a good thing yeah but also I've got, I've got one slack plus you know I've got some dude I've asked to leave politely and he was going to leave because he was about about, um, about four grand in a week and now he's um, got a great um, excuse not to uh, I'm loving with a bugger for another <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because oh, the government's, uh, government's actually uh, stopped you from evicting anyone for three months, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't say I'm overjoyed about that. No, um, and that's like, if he doesn't pay you yeah. for the next three months, then you're in uh, even more of an issue. Yeah, I, I can ride the storm, but um, I prefer not to. You know, I just wish it was slightly better on that particular front. You'll have to cut but back. Honestly, You'll have to yeah, cut back. The whole situation too traumatic. I've applied for um, <clears throat> um, 
I know I've had a similar situation to me as applied for a couple of mortgage holidays. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so you still bounce with full. Yeah, so it should be quick. <laughs> you still bounce with full, full your daily uh, pint. Yeah, two daily pints. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, All right. Thanks, Joe. Uh, yeah. Too bad, buddy. Yeah. If, um, if you need, I think there could be others that If you need um, Phil's, if you need Phil's contact details, drop me an email and I'll forward them to you. We'll do, Dan. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. Great to speak to you. (laughs) Cheers. Okay. Okay. Um, His property price will go down by how much, please? Uh, Please let us know. Thank you. So, Mohammed, I've got my crystal ball in front of me. And um, do you know what? Despite the fact that I'm rubbing it with a special cloth, it's still very cloudy. Um, I don't think more than six months past when we all go back to as normal as possible, we're going to go back to. I don't think that um, there's going to be much of a change. I think there might be some deals to be had because of nothing much moving um, straight after this or now there might be a deal for a few little cheeky offers so there we go cool um, right so I had a go with Matt a few weeks ago on a one to one had to leave early to eat some for lunch I can't remember I uh, got an offer on a three bed terrace house asking price 265 put in one five two. Everything come out nice. I'm still interested. It's interested. The yeah, only passed away a few months ago. It's a shit hole. Needs everything doing about eighty ton grand to spend on it. Would be worth three thirty five pre. Think about what's the option to go and buy and go and do up. Um. My my thinking's on that is. Asking price was two six five. You put in one five two. They said no. They've come back now and said okay. Of course, that's what's happening at the moment. Uh, you said it should be three three five. Um, I I would technically um, drop the offer by another twenty grand and give them twenty grand, providing you meet three three five. Okay, um, if you're doing it on a delayed completion, you can probably offer them um, the 265 they're asking. Um, and because of the reduction in no stamp and the reduction in the by the running of the whole thing, um, so reduction of no stamp and no mortgage having to support it, you'll cut the buy sell cost down dramatically and make more money by paying them more on a delayed completion. Uh, I normally, for all my mentees, um, I normally negotiate that with the agents direct. And I've got quite a lot of uh, videos of different negotiations that I'm putting on to YouTube at the moment. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Carmelo's laughing. <laughs> because <laughs> I'm wrapping it with a special cloth <laughs> okay alright so um, let's just have a quick look see if there's any more hands I'm happy to take one more question um, Nasa you've put your hand up how can I help I've unmuted you if you want to speak Nasa Oh, sorry, it's me. I didn't hear my name. <laughs> Hi, then. Hi. Uh, How can I help? Yeah, uh, yeah uh, possibly Ajit uh, may have covered this in a prior webinar. I'm sorry if I missed it. But uh, I get that there's going to be opportunities because of the current market situation, also because of the Section 24 having a big, big impact now. Yeah. But, uh, you know, when we come across these opportunities, I mean, in times of uncertainty, I guess the uh, lender's risk appetite also goes down. So to, to, to lend money degree, uh, yeah. in this time. Mm-hmm. Well, what's what's your guidance around that in terms of how we can step up these deals when maybe the financing uh, is, is not readily available? 
Yeah, there's finances still available, um, and you know, um, while we can still get mortgages, we can make an offer subject to mortgage. Um, so I'm going to ask Sajid to come back again this Friday. So if you can join Friday, that you can ask him direct. Um, from what he was saying on Friday, and there is a recording of the webinar. If you want to email Mark at glenarmstrong.com, he'll send you a recording. Um, of the conversation with Ajit, uh, he'll tell you, or he told us what mortgage companies are still lending. Um, mm. He said 85% mortgages have gone away, but there's still a few 80% and uh, still a lot of 75%. Where they value it, if they down value, then reduce your offer. Mm. Yeah. Um, and if you're holding them long term, then you've got yourself a deal, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So you know you can benefit on a low offer if if um, you you can use that to your advantage. Cool. Thank you. Um, I did see one other person with their hand up. Now let's go to Jay Ahmed. Hi Jay, how can I help you? Yeah, looks like Jay's not going to. Uh, come offline so um yeah, it's really good to talk to everyone tonight i uh, hope you've enjoyed today's webinar like i said tomorrow i have got sean uh is going to be talking uh, about the current market and on thursday i've arranged for uh, one of my clients who again has been an agent in london for over 20 years he also does quite a bit of developing himself uh he's going to come and talk to us on thursday so that'll be an interesting one. And I'm just waiting to hear on a date when my council can come and talk to you about tax savings and different things that are available to you in the current market. So um, take care, have a good evening. Uh, hope you've enjoyed this evening's webinar. Feedback of the webinar would be really cool by email, please. If you could take a couple of minutes just to uh, drop us a testimonial of how, how this is helping or any suggestions you've got for anything you want to glenn at glennarmstrong.com that would be absolutely brilliant